What's up guys, David Land here doing something a little bit different than the norm in terms of the NASCAR diecast content on this channel. We're talking about a 124 scale car, uh, Gray Galdings number 23 Toyota Camry for BK Racing. Uh, now I own six, count them, six modern NASCAR 124s. I own four versions of Kyle Larson's various cars, actually three cars in one truck, uh, and I also own the uh, Trevor Bain throwback from last year. Uh, but this is kind of my first non-big team, non-throwback, non-truck uh, die cast. And the reason I bought it is not because I'm a huge Gray Galding fan. It may shock and, and uh, surprise everybody, but I'm not a big Gray Galding fan. Not, not saying I don't like him, I'm just saying I'm not a, like, you know, I'm not buying all his merchandise, uh, but because I'm a fan of the sponsor. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite soda, it would definitely be Dr. Pepper, uh, first, second, third, and fourth. Not fifth, though. Fifth would be, like, vanilla Pepsi or something like that. But but Dr. Pepper's, to, to be fair, Dr. Pepper is the best soda, and you cannot uh, say anything to change my mind on that. But that made me decide, hey, that's a good-looking die cast. That's new uh, when I saw it at the Dover Merchandise Trailers. Uh, the problem was that uh, after I had seen it and purchased it at the Dover Merchandise Trailers, I went outside the track and realized that I could have gotten it for about uh, $5 cheaper. Uh, so, yeah, I paid $45 for this at the um, at the NASCAR Trailers. Not a bad price, but considering you can get it for th uh, 40 bucks. Uh, from your local diecast dealer, and probably you can get it cheaper uh, if you wait a little bit. Don't wait too long because a lot of times these cars will dry up. Uh, but uh, I, I suspect you can get this fairly cheap. Uh, now, what's weird about NASCAR diecast is that, like, when I was looking through the merchandise trailers at, at Dover, like, there were Jimmy Johnson's 124 skill cars, mind you, for like $75. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's a little too much. Um, I would say, generally speaking, uh, obviously I'm picky when it comes to 124 NASCARs. Uh, my max price would be about $60 on one of these. And, uh, the only time I paid $60 ever for a 124 was when I bought Kyle Larson's Eddie Cheever throwback because I felt a, that was a scheme that was worth it. B it's going to be val more valuable than $60 within a year or so. And, uh, yeah, it's going to dry up eventually, especially cause it was the last target throwback. In fact, I think the only target throwback, uh, and uh, obviously targets going away from the sport. So that was a good purchase for me, but generally speaking with 124 scale cars, unless they're super rare, I'd say $60 should probably be the max you should pay for them because eh, they're pretty much not worth it uh, past that point. Uh, quick look at some of the items on the box. Obviously the car is already out of the box. I do like these stickers that they put on there with the render of the car and obviously Dr. Pepper. And obviously it's the standard finish because I don't think they did a color chrome of uh, Gray Galdings. Uh, oh, I paid $50 for it. I didn't pay $45. So I paid $10 more than I should have. Uh, yeah, there you go. Stupid David. But uh, yeah, whatever. I guess BK Racing got a little bit more of my money. Oh, wait, no. Uh, the NASCAR teams don't get any of the merchandising <laughs> merchandising uh, uh, cost. Anyway, let's go in for a close-up on uh, Gray Galdings number 23 because um, it's a fairly interesting and different die cast and I'll show you a few reasons why. Here is Gray Galdings number 23 Dr. Peppa car uh, up close and personal. Uh, you can tell it's a very nice looking die cast. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I had seen that has the correct spoiler along with the correct Monster Energy banner on it. Uh, you'd be surprised how hard those seem to be to come by uh, in recent uh, NASCAR die casts. This has been a bit of a weird year um, and especially because uh, Hendrick Motorsports the vast, vast leader in diecast produced uh, won't even let that Monster Energy stuff be on their car at all. So that creates a market of a lot of inaccurate diecast. But thankfully, BK Racing has no such qualms, even though Dr. Pepper is their main sponsor. And Dr. Pepper is technically a competing brand with Monster Energy, um, just from the fact that it's a soft drink. But uh, I guess Dr. Pepper is nicer than Pepsi. Another reason why I like Dr. Pepper. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful looking uh, mold. They did a really good job uh, capturing the front fascia of the uh, Toyota Camry. And I think the Toyota Camry is definitely one of the better looking cars in NASCAR. It's a toss up at the moment uh, in the current cars between uh, this one and the Ford Fusion. Uh, but I would have to say that uh, this one at the moment is the best looking one. We'll have to see when the Chevy Camaro debuts next year, uh, which is really next year is only a couple months or like a month away. But uh, yeah, when that debuts, we're going to have to see who has the best looking car in NASCAR. But at the moment, 
I think it's the Camry. Just look at that interesting detail. They did a really good job molding this. Um, it just looks really nice. Of course, this car uh, comes with an opening hood as we're going to try to get this thing open. Come on. Come on, hood. I'll try to get it in the shot. I know people get triggered when I do when I hit it on the bottom to get the hood open, but uh, well maybe that hood is not coming up. Maybe the hood doesn't open. Nope, there it goes. Okay, so you get the hood opening feature. You get a little bit of engine detail. You also get uh, the Toyota logo and the Dr Pepper logo underneath the hood. So that's pretty cool. I do like that they print stuff underneath the hood, but uh, they don't print a whole lot of stuff on the engine. So that closes. Uh, another opening feature on this car are the roof flaps. The roof flaps do indeed deploy. Let's see if we can get them both up. There we go. Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> well, there you go. The roof flaps deploy on this car. But interestingly, the trunk does not come up. The trunk is glued down, even though it looks like it's a separate piece. And it seems to want to move. It's uh, it's stuck on, and it, won't, it will not go up. Uh, so I don't know why they sealed the... The trunk, for some reason, I don't have a clue, but they did. Um, you also got like the American Ethanol logo and all that stuff that's always talked about. Obviously, nice to see the Monster Energy logo, and since uh, Gray Galding is not 21 yet, or at least at the time that this car was produced, we get the 21 means 21 contingency rather than the uh, official one. Also interesting to note that this uh, car has a plastic, uh, um, whatever that is, the... Uh, the window net. The window net. Uh, yeah, the window net comes down, the roof flaps deploy. There you go. But uh, yeah, it has a plastic one. Uh, I'm guessing that's just because it's a cheaper die cast rather than the the more expensive ones. Uh, a lot of, I think almost all the Larsons I have, maybe all four of the Larsons I have have that. But um, the Trevor Bain, which interestingly enough does not have roof flaps. This one has roof flaps and the uh, plastic window net, which is really weird. It's also got a plastic base, but uh, they did paint some stuff down there. So that is nice. Uh, and then I'll just show off the DIN number because people like DINs. So there you go, 343. I think this had a production run of 500. Let me look at the, uh, the thing. Uh, no, 409. So we're right at the back in terms of the DIN numbers here. I'm guessing the, uh, the uh, merchandise trailer got these late. And there's Greg Galding's name. But again, during the season, um, this Dr. Pepper car did not run very much. And I do not know when Greg Galding actually ran this car. Uh, the only time I remember seeing actually the Dr. Pepper car in competition was in the fall Talladega race, and it was driven by Joey Gase, and driven straight into the wall by Joey Gase at one point in a pretty savage looking crash, to be honest with you. Oh, interesting also to note that there's a couple, just a bunch of little tiny contingencies over there, including Bosch spark plugs, Wish, Wix filters, some big sponsors, so they do have some big sponsors in as well. Uh, you got Dr. Pepper and uh, EJ Wade. Uh, I hope that car gets produced, the EJ Wade car, but I think it got canceled. But uh, I will say that in terms of small team diecast, there is another one that I'm going to be purchasing very soon, which is the uh, the uh, De Benedetto uh, Miller High Life throwback. I want that one. So that will probably be the next 124 you see on this channel, unless I decide to review the Larson uh, throwback, which I do have sitting over there somewhere. Uh, so if you want to see that, let me know down in the comments. Um, and also let me know how I did on my uh, review of this 124. I always kind of feel weird reviewing big die cast, even like the indie cars. It's just uh, if, it's a weird sensation after you review a lot of uh, 164s. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Remember to hit the like button down below. Uh, let me know if you have this car. Uh, I don't know if many people have this, <laughs> if people were interested in this. Uh, I think this may be the first review of this car on YouTube. So uh, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe because there's a lot of cool racing content coming down the line. So once again, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.